In this segment, I want to get into firmware hacking. Now, I don't want to really focus on one specific topic right now. I want to explain what firmware hacking is in general, and I'll explain something called Rockbox in a little bit. Now, when you have an embedded device, let's say my Sansa E250 MP3 player, or your iPod, or your cell phone, or your PDA, or your Pocket PC, or your Palm, or your Blackberry, or whatever, you have a firmware. Your firmware is your operating system. Now, when you first turn on the device, there's typically something called an IPL, or an intermediate, or an immediate bootloader. It's like a BIOS to your computer, or a boot ROM to an embedded appliance. When it first turns on, it boots up the text hardware, make sure everything's in check, make sure that you have enough power and everything's all ready, and then boots into the firmware, and the firmware is that operating system. Now, typically, when, whenever we do some firmware hacking, we're not messing around with the IPL, or the BIOS for that matter. Maybe in some further segments, if we do get complicated enough, I'll get into some, some IPL and some BIOS hacks, but that's way down the road. Okay, so, why would you want to do something like this? In previous segments, we have done some stuff with cell phones to unlock features that the carriers would lock out. You know, things like uh, custom menu settings, or uh, use your own ringtones, or the MP3 player. The reason that the carrier actually locks these out is because they don't want to have to pay tech support, uh, their own tech support agents, to help people who don't know how to use their products, period. So they'd rather lock you out and make sure that you don't dick with it so they don't have to pay tech support to help you do it. Because most people, as we know, are total fuckwits and don't know how to read a quick start guide. But you know what? In the true hacker principle of things, we want to push our devices as far as we can. So in earlier segments, we've actually gone to our cell phone and unlocked features that by default are there. We've gone into our PDAs and unlocked features that were there. They just locked us out of it because they think we're idiots and shouldn't be playing with it. But you know what? We're not idiots. We, for the most part, know what the fuck we're doing. And if we don't know what the fuck we're doing, we know not to bitch and complain at tech support because we broke something. So, we're going to do a little bit of a firmware hacking with Rockbox. Rockbox is actually a firmware replacement for many uh, MP3 players such as the San, uh, SanDisk, SanDisk Sansa, the iPod, the Arcos, the iRiver, the Dell Jukebox. There's a whole bunch of them. It's open source. It's uh, part of the GPL license, which means if you are a coder and you want to get involved and really customize it to your liking, you can do it. If you're really not that brilliant when it comes to code, I'm not that brilliant. I suck with software. Uh, even if you don't even know what the difference between a ROM and a RAM is, the Rockbox utility uh, allows you to actually flash your device pretty much foolproof. So even if you don't know what you're doing, it'll guide you through step by step and explain to you what's going on. So what we're going to do today is we're going to go to the laptop side, plug my little son of a bitch MP3 player in that I got off of Woot for $25, and we're going to put Rockbox on. But before you ever flash any device, the first thing you want to ask yourself is, why do I want to do this? A lot of people will blindly jump face first into the deep end of the pool and not realize there's no water, and then they're fucked. They're going to smash their face into the bottom of the pool, and then what are you going to do after that? Why do you want to do this? Now, I went to the Rockbox website. Now, I was debating. Now, I do have a 5G iPod that I got for free. I wouldn't own an iPod any other reason if I had, unless it was free. Um, but there are drawbacks and there are benefits. Now, some of the benefits. Whenever I turn on my SanDisk Sansa, it refreshes the database of music. I've got two gigs on board and two gigs on the TransFlash card. And it can only read two gigs on the SD card. And that ref refreshing database takes forever. It pisses me off. I mean, by the time I'm actually listening to music, I'm usually where I want to be, and I turn the music off anyway. So with Rockbox, I can turn that off. Also, out of the box, uh, trans flashcards that I use, little itty bitty ones, uh, SanDisk Sans's firmware can only read two gigs. With Rockbox, I can read well above two gigs. So it allows me to put more music on here than was initially uh, designed for. It also allows me to customize the interface, because not that the interface sucks, uh, there are features in there that I don't really care to see. I I'm never probably going to use the FM radio, I don't give a crap. It also allows you to play back uh, more media file formats, different, uh, uh, like instead of just MP3, you can play back different bit rates, alternate bit rates, higher bit rates, AUG formats, WAV formats. Um, it also allows me to play back different JPEG images as well as different movie files. Now, it's really not designed to play movies, but by default, Sansa makes you encode in a proprietary format. With Rockbox, I can record in their not locked down, you know, SanDisk format. Now, the drawbacks, which is, to me, my opinion, not that bad. There's no USB mode in, in Rockbox for the Sansa.
That does kind of suck because I can't charge the, uh, the MP3 player and I can't transfer files over. I don't think it's that bad because you can dual boot the uh, this, uh, SanDisk firmware as well as the Rockbox firmware. So if I wanted to charge the MP3 player or use this as a, as a card reader or a portable hard drive or a portable flash drive, I could just reboot right back into the, the SanDisk Sansa firmware with no problem. You can do the same thing with iPods and Arcos and, uh, Arcos and such and such, such and such, and uh, you can dual boot. The question is, do you want to? Some people think it's cumbersome, some people don't care. It's up to you to decide. So we're going to go to the computer side, and we're going to set everything up, and we're going to flash this little son of a bitch with Rockbox, and we're going to get into a little bit of firmware hacking. Here in front of us we have the Rockbox main webpage, rockbox.org. It explains what Rockbox is and what platform supports. Apple, first through 5.5 generation iPod, Mini, such and such. The Arcos, the Kawan, the iRiver, the Olympus, the SanDisk, and the Toshiba. Uh, it has quick links of why you should run Rockbox, what has changed in the different versions, and status for current work in progress targets, uh, new uh, devices that they're actually working on. Now, over in the utility section, they actually have the Rockbox utility, which we'll be using today, which is a a uh, really easy way of getting Rockbox on your device without having any kind of major complications or things of the such. If you have any questions, they have a frequently asked questions about Rockbox, including what it is, what it does, what it can do, what it can't do, is it legal, uh, all of that jazz. I'd highly recommend going through all of this and getting as much information about whether or not you want to actually install a new firmware on your MP3 player or not. They also have uh, a daily build. The daily build is basically a, uh, an up-to-date rebuild of firmwares for specific players. They even have a graphical uh, picture of all of the MP3 players that it supports currently. And you can get an in-detailed PDF manual for that device. So I've already gone ahead and downloaded the PDF for the uh, SanDisk Sansa E200 series. Now it's also uh, applicable for the E250 and the 250R. Now the R is the Rhapsody edition. Uh, there are some uh, discrepancies between that, but you know it's not applicable to this segment. So I've got the PDF file open, and I've got the manual, and I've breezed through it. I'd highly recommend going and reading this relatively thoroughly, especially the installation. Uh, you know, we, we know what the introduction is. We know where to get help. Um, starting with page 12, it's the overview of the installation of how the Sansa bootloader works, how the Rockbox bootloader works, how the Rockbox firmware works how to add fonts, how to add themes, what prerequisites are needed to uh, actually install Rockbox. Of course, this is for the Sansa. You'd have to read the PDF for your own device. And even before deciding on whether or not you want to install Rockbox, I'd read, the, read this manual to see if, it's, if you have the competence to do it. So um, section 2.3 for the Sansa is installing Rockbox with the automated installation using the Rockbox utility, which I will showcase in a moment. So. You know, with all things being equal, it goes through the, uh, the auto installer as well as the manual installation and step by step exactly what you need to do and how to set everything up. It's fairly easy. It's fairly foolproof unless you're some kind of idiot we have not yet detected. And uh, if you do fuck this up, let us know so we know how to classify your level of idiocy, please. I'm going to go ahead and boot up my Sansa just to show that it's at the stock firmware. Now, it does take a little bit to boot up and it's got that really annoying refresh database thing. But there are certain things that we need to do on the actual SanDisk Sansa before we can go ahead and figure out whether or not we can or cannot put on a uh, Rockbox. So here's the annoying refresh database. It's going to take a little while. Now if you are a Linux or an OS X user, don't fret. There are utilities that can aid you. The, the easy utility that they have, they, it is available for OS X and uh, and Linux, but if you want to do this the manual way, it's pretty much, uh, as long as you can support USB mass storage devices, you're good to go. So we're going to have to go ahead in the settings, and they want us to go into the info. And if you can read that top line, it says version 01.02.18a. That verifies that Rockbox can be put on this device. Now we can also go down and, and you know, check out some of the other information, but now nah, who gives a crap. Another thing that we have to do before we put Rockbox on is we have to make sure that it's in the appropriate USB mode. It tells us that it has to be in MSC mode, which makes the, uh, the Sansa recognize as a USB disk. MTP mode 
would allow it, uh, Windows Media Player 9, 10, and so forth to uh, synchronize its media and DRM to the, uh, to the device. So we want to be in MSC mode, which we already are. So we're going to go ahead back to the computer side real quick, and we're going to hook up the USB cable. We'll do that now. And it's connected. Computer detected it as a drive. We're going to go to the computer side. We're going to go to the Rockbox utility and proceed to install Rockbox on the MP3 player. Here is the Rockbox utility. Now the Sansa has been reconnected to the computer as a USB drive and we've selected the SanDisk Sansa E200 at the E drive, which is where it's been mapped. You can hit the change location or the change button and either manually select where your device is or you can hit the auto detect and it has auto detected that it's at the E drive. Now it's going to automatically go online and download the latest copy of Rockbox. If you use a proxy, this is where you have to fill it in your language, and if you have a text-to-speech and encoder option for uh, if you decide to do any of the accessibility stuff, which is uh, if vocal assist, like if you're blind and you can't read the menus. Now, I've been having a problem with Rockbox where it's not installing the bootloader for some reason. So I've downloaded the Sansa Patcher. We'll drag this over for a second. It says, scanning the disk devices. The E200 has been found on disk device 1, reading partition table from the physical drive. And it explains some information. Enter I to install the Rockbox bootloader, U to uninstall, or C to cancel. I want to install. I'm going to hit I and enter. And you'll notice on the screen it says it's writing. The Sansa Patcher says press exit to enter. And it's going to go ahead and it's going to write for a little while. We're going to cut frame, wait till this is done, and we will flash, uh, we will cut scene over to the Rockbox utility. All right, it still says writing. I think it's just stuck in the writing mode. I'm actually going to jump the gun. I'm going to go to the installation. I'm not even going to bother with the quick start. And I'm just going to install Rockbox. And I'm going to use Rockbox Stable. And we're going to go to install. It's going to automatically download from the internet. And hopefully this will work. All right, it says the installation was completed and Rockbox is now on my MP3 player. And if you notice, the screen says connected. It's no longer writing, which means it's safe to unplug. So when we unplug this, it should actually restart. Disconnected, system restart. There's the SanDisk loader. And there's the Rockbox bootloader. And there's Rockbox. Now, I would go in and install some new fonts. This is kind of small, kind of hard to see. And I'll try to up the exposure of my camera a bit so maybe you guys can see. It is a little dim, but uh, there it is. There's Rockbox. Now you can start fidd fiddling around with the new firmware and uh, add more features to the device than normally wouldn't be there. All right, there we have it. With just a little bit of time and patience, we got a new firmware on our MP3 player that gives us more than what the manufacturer intended us to do. Will it void your warranty? Probably most more than likely. Is it legal for this device? Yes, Rockbox is completely open source, GPL, and is 100% legal to use. Now, uh, if you do have a problem with it or you do break your device, shit happens. But to tell you the truth, this is one of the safer devices to fuck around with. Rockbox, in general, I mean. Now, hopefully this will be a segue into some more, uh, some more segments, some future segments in uh, doing some more firmware hacking for other devices. Gotta see. We, if you guys want it, we'll definitely air it. Um, this isn't my first time, my first foray into Rockbox. I have played with it in the past. I have bricked a few iPods, I, so you have been warned. So I'm just going to end it here. If you have any questions or comments, you can always catch me on IRC. Uh, information, uh, as always, on the website. Uh, you can always hit me up on the forums or ask questions there. They've been a little bit dead lately, which I kind of like because I hate admitting the forums. I've had better things to do, like make segments. So uh, hope this piqued your interest. If you have any questions or comments, contact us. Let us know what you think. You know, it's open source, open IPTV, people. This is for you, not for me. So let us know what you think. Let us know what you want, and we'll try to cover it. If you have any kind of uh, ideas for segments or suggestions for... Uh, other devices or if you have a device that you'd like to showcase that has a pretty cool firmware hack that's not really too dangerous or illegal. We don't want to see any uh, fauna or uh, hand grenades or Wi-Fi hand grenades or any kind of uh, you know uh, Wi-Fi hacking deauth attacks or anything like that. But uh, you know maybe you have an HTC product or a PDA or a cell phone that 
you can upgrade to do a little bit more than what it's intended to do, let us know. All right, everyone, good luck and have fun.